Hello and uh, welcome. I'm Colin Davidson. I'm the president of the, the college and um, I'm delighted today to be joined by Professor Bernie Chang, who's the new president of the Royal College of Ophthalmologists. And we're going to have a, a little bit of chat about Bernie's vision for, for ophthalmology, chat a little bit about how our colleges have, have, have worked uh, together during this pandemic and, and maybe talk a little bit about the future, whatever that may hold. So um, welcome, Bernie. It's great to be chatting to you today. So firstly, congratulations on your new role uh, as president. I think you took over um, at the end of May. So maybe if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your kind of expertise in the, your area of ophthalmology. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, and uh, uh, I suppose, um, like myself, you're fairly new to the presidential role uh, of a college as well. So I think we'll both uh, certainly be uh, talking and working together a lot more uh, in the future. Uh, so I am a consultant ophthalmologist uh, specializing in oculoplastic surgery, and I'm based in Leeds uh, Teaching Hospitals NHS Trust. Uh, in terms of uh, working uh, with uh, my college uh, in the past. Uh, that started actually in 2003 when uh, I was elected its, uh, the Yorkshire's regional representative, uh, so became a, a member of council. Uh, I then served uh, two terms before being uh, elected the uh, honorary secretary uh, to, to the college. And three years after that, I was uh, vice president uh, of the college chairing the professional standards committee. Uh, I think that gave me really good experience, really, uh, you know, helping to write documents on, on, on standards that were required for uh, outpatients, uh, theatre, things like that. Uh, following that, I chaired the uh, college's external services review uh, group. So this is when the college would be invited uh, to visit uh, hospitals, uh, eye departments that were uh, perhaps struggling a little bit with, with their service or, or had certain things that they wanted uh, external uh, advice on. And this was actually quite a positive experience for the departments because often, you know, we could highlight what was going on well, uh, as well as where improvements could be made. Uh, and it was uh, just December last year that uh, the uh, elections took place and yes, I just took over from Mike Burden uh, as uh, the Royal College's 13th president uh, at the end of May of this year. Great, thanks for, for that, Bernie. Um, yeah, as you pointed out, um, you, I'm fairly new to the, to the role as well, and I certainly had uh, a few things I had at top of my mind uh, that I'd like to, to achieve. Um, but um, the, the pandemic has had a, a bit of an effect on that. I mean, what, what about from your, your perspective? I'm sure you had some, some thoughts as to how you saw your presidency going uh, and maybe what, what impact has, has the pandemic had upon that? In, in essence, perhaps my uh, aims or what I hope to achieve remains uh, unchanged. I mean, the, the, the main focus of where I wanted to lead uh, my college was to ensure that patients uh, would be seen in a timely manner uh, and that they would receive the highest quality care uh, possible uh, in the right setting. And the other part was to ensure that future ophthalmologists, so our eye doctors in training, uh, received uh, you know, good training opportunities so that we, we would be able to improve on the workforce that, that we have. Quite early on anyway, even in, in my department, we have always embraced uh, multidisciplinary working in, in that we have got uh, trained optometrists uh, looking after our glaucoma patients uh, and, and one or two of our optometrists also helping out with eye casualty. Uh, so, and, and we have orthoptists trained, for example, to give uh, intravitreal injections. So part of my vision was to uh, develop that MDT working uh, throughout uh, the the country, so that care can be you know given by uh, non-consultant ophthalmologists, but obviously to a level that's safe, 
into a standard that, that is at least equal. When COVID hit, I think obviously that puts a lot of pressure. Uh, even before COVID, we knew that we had capacity demand issues, that a lot of patients were in a, in a backlog and could not be seen uh, in, in a timely manner. And with COVID, we know that because elective routine work uh, ground to a halt, this uh, backlog of patients that need to be seen will have increased tremendously. So, you know, I think the focus now will be how we try to uh, increase capacity, not just to cope with the previous backlog, but the new backlog uh, due, to, uh, due to COVID. Yeah, it's certainly presenting lots of challenges, isn't it, in terms of uh, uh, backlogs of patients that uh, that we need to to catch up with. I think at, at the minute we're all maybe ad adapting to to different ways of, of working, and and certainly in in optometry, it's been something we've been getting used to with 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 PPE. From from an ophthalmology point of view, how has that been in in your clinics with uh, throughput of, of patients with social distancing? The PPE has has definitely been an issue. I mean, even in the beginning, you know, it was whether there was enough protection for staff and, and patients. Uh, and now that uh, you know, Public Health England and and uh, Joint Royal Colleges have issued advice as to what uh, is the safest environment to to see patients in, uh, it, it has definitely changed how many patients we can see uh, in in a clinic. So the, uh, the social distancing, you know, the two meter rule currently uh, and trying to ensure that uh, as few patients cross over when they come to clinic uh, to reduce uh, risk of, of spreading COVID or catching COVID uh, does mean that uh, uh, capacity probably will have dropped to, you know, perhaps as much as 50 percent of, of what it used to be in, in clinics. Um, there's no doubt, though, that it may be a, a good thing for patients uh, in the long run because we know that prior to COVID, you know, overbooked uh, clinics and, and heavy uh, clinics where a lot of patients and their carers or relatives are in the waiting room uh, was fairly normal in quite a lot of hospitals. But now that we know we have to uh, enforce or ensure uh, the, the distancing, uh, etc. You know, the clinic rooms now will be much more uh, open, and patients, I suspect, will not have to wait uh, nearly as long as they have to be seen, uh, like in the past. In terms of our staff wearing the PPE, um, I think in clinics it, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so you know, we have our masks, uh, our visors, and a lot of us. Uh, Ophthalmologists, in any case, uh, either have uh, our surgical scrubs to wear uh, or we have uh, aprons over our no normal work clothes uh, together with the gloves. But with all that, I mean, the most important thing still is uh, hand hygiene. You know, hygiene is more important, I think, than or, or equally as important as the, the PPE gear. OK, thanks. Uh, I mean, yeah, it certainly presents its challenges, doesn't it? Um, uh, you, you mentioned that um, where, where you work, particularly in, in the Leeds area, Bernie, that um, multidisciplinary team working is, is uh, a, an important aspect of, of seeing seeing the patients uh, and making sure that the patient care is, is there. I mean, we as um, the pandemic has developed, our two colleges have, have worked together um, to, to try and deal with the situation. And, and we're, we're um, currently looking at new pathways that, that maybe could help us repair, prepare for the recovery period. But um, how, how could, do you see the, the, our, our two professions working together um, through this to, to, to help maybe get patients uh, seen and, and catch up with some of these postponed routine appointments? Yeah, I think there's no doubt that, uh, you know, in, in a sense, we, we need each other uh, in that uh, we are the natural workforce when it comes to delivering eye care. Um, we, you know, we have in, in 
recent, just recently developed uh, the, the queues, uh, the, the COVID-19 urgent eye care services uh, pathways together. And that obviously was very helpful because uh, it, it allowed an, you know, patients with urgent conditions to be seen in settings outside of a hospital. Uh, certainly in, in the beginning of, of the pandemic, when uh, COVID was, was more prevalent, uh, the safer place for patients to be seen was probably out of hospital. Uh, although obviously if, if patients need uh, medical care or surgical uh, intervention, they would still have to come, come into hospital. But the idea that they could go outside to have a, a proper assessment and, and even treatment started by the appropriately trained uh, optometrist was uh, was very helpful. So I can only see that this need will continue and that this need will increase uh, in, in the future. Because even as we start to try to uh, restore capacity, uh, it's clear because of the restrictions we just talked about, uh, about the social distancing and, and PP in hospital, that having you know, a community setting for patients to be seen uh, and assessed in, in the appropriate manner uh, is crucial uh, in order to to get patients uh, with eye conditions managed properly. Great. Now it, it's really encouraging to to hear that because uh, you know as a college we're we're really keen to to work with you to help develop and and um, look at the way our, our workforce can can work uh, together better um, maybe in future. Uh, do you think there's anything else that that maybe we can look at as as joint colleges to work on together that would again benefit our patients and and be something that our our members would welcome? Yes, I think examples of what, what uh, the collaborative work that we, we've been doing already exists. For example, shared care glaucoma, uh, that, that's uh, an important one. And I can only see that, you know, for the more routine uh, uh, conditions, that if we are able to expand that kind of service uh, with optometrists, then we will be able to, to you know, manage the, the capacity issues more because there's no doubt that in hospital we are likely to need to focus on patients with more uh, urgent conditions that need surgical treatment for example and therefore if we know that that routine patients can be seen safely uh, outside in the community then we can focus on on getting uh, the care needed for for the patients in hospital, knowing that optometrists are able to look after the, the patients with, with the more routine conditions outside. And obviously there needs to be this two-way um, uh, integration of the services because some patients, uh, even when the condition is felt to be routine at first, may have a more urgent condition that then needs to be referred into hospital for, for treatment. So I can only see the, that uh, in the near future, we, we're going to have to increase the uh, capacity in the community uh, with optometrists. Okay, thanks, Bernie. It's really great to get your your, your thoughts on that. And I, I know that um, the, the way that we've been working has had to change and that there's been some um, alterations to the way we, we deal with patients, such as some remote consultations. Um, some of these things, I, I think, may be things that we carry forward, um, and and that that may be something that we, we look at when when things uh, start to return to, to normal. Are, are there any sort of things that you would like to see um, that um, you've changed and developed in the way that your services work that you'd like to carry forward when when maybe things are are, are returning to. The, the, the type of normal that, that we hope will return? Well, with, without a doubt, um, you know, it's, it's been a, a wake up call, if you will, uh, what, what's happened with, with the pandemic. Uh, and the use of virtual consultations, uh, be it with uh, the Attend Anywhere software or even a simple telephone call uh, with uh, patients or optometrists who are calling into hospital for advice, that has in my uh, view, worked better than expected uh, in that you know, everybody who has tried it has found uh, that it was positive, 
And in fact, if, if you look at Morefields Eye Hospital now, I think they're doing hundreds of appointments a day with the Attend Anywhere, so, so with virtual uh, consultation. I think as we roll that out, obviously we have to make sure that uh, you know the technology will, will will be there to support that kind of work. I mean, with queues, um, one of the uh, stumbling blocks which had to be overcome was how does data uh, and scan pictures, for example, from community optometrists, you know, how do we get that safely into the hospital? And uh, that was actually uh, solved with uh, the system called Opera in, in Manchester. So I can see that, yes, we're going to have to adapt, but uh, we're already showing that, that it can be done. And, and they should, uh, we shouldn't be afraid, basically, to, to keep, keep uh, expanding this. Uh, that, thanks, Bernie. I, I mean, it, it is uh, a time of change, and, and I think adopting the, the good procedures that we've identified dur during the pandemic is, is, is really something that um, is, is to be applauded, um, and, and really maybe not reverting back to, to, to systems where we've had overbooked clinics and, and uh, patients waiting for, for a long time. So it's been, it's been really great to chat and to get your, your thoughts and, and views. I, I really appreciate your, your time, um, and uh, I, I look forward to um, chatting to you and um, working together um, in future. Yeah, thank you very much, Holly. Thanks.